Hi guys and welcome Gnembon here. In today's Fun Farms episode I will explain all the underlying mechanics of iron farming as of 1.14.4 and then show a few designs of iron farms that are not only efficient but also focus on how to make the least impact on the game. In case you are playing on a server with multiple people or simply want to stack up the design to get even more iron out of it. My goal for the episode is not only to show you some awesome farm designs right there, but to explain all the mechanics so you can design an iron golem farm yourself that might better suit your needs. So you've been requesting me to design an iron farm for a while, however prior to 1.14 to build an interesting farm you would almost have to specialize in iron farms and only do them to come up with something cool and interesting. That changed in 1.14 where Moyang ripped all the quirky and unintended village stacking mechanics for something that even a casual player like me can understand. Currently there are two mechanics that can be used to farm iron. The first relies on villagers sharing gossip which happens to happen during a very limited portion of the day. It only yields a few bits of iron and requires tons of villagers. And the second one added quite a bit later which relies on villagers being in distress which has almost instant effect and allows you to farm iron all day around. Guess which one we'll be using here today. But first, couple very important numbers. A villager tracks all entities around him that are within 16 blocks away. It updates that list every second, so every 20 ticks, and there is no regularity when villagers update it, meaning two villagers will update this list with different offsets, which is set randomly when the villager is spawned or loaded. The villagers mob sensing timings are not stored with villagers, so they are not available via data command, and they change every time we load a chunk with that villager in question. Golem Sensor uses that list of mobs that get updated every 20 ticks, but it only checks for golems in it every 10 seconds, so every 200 ticks, and it's also randomized between villagers, so there is no regularity. Villagers also keep track when they last have seen a golem and can only spawn a golem if they didn't see one in past 30 seconds or 600 ticks. Since this bit is also not saved in the NBT, so not available via data command, I needed to use a mod to help us to show that in action. The mod displays whether they meet uh, the sleep and the work requirement, if they are in panic, and it also shows their timeout for the eligibility to summon a golem, indicating whether they can have it or not. We'll go back to all those bits in a moment, but for now we'll just use it to verify whether they can just see the golem. The entity to be counted just needs to touch this area, meaning that, for example, to detect an iron golem, which is quite a super-sized guy, it can actually be a little further away. So with that villager over there, the golem is detected not only here, like so, but also we can drop it by two blocks. And as you can see, the villager still updated his counter. So in order to remove the golem completely from villager senses, we need to drop it one more, like so. As you can see, yeah, the villager is not updating that counter anymore. So that in total is 19 blocks. Uh, golems, as I said, can spawn in gossip time, but that's lame, or when the villagers are in panic mode. We can see here the panic symbol lights up when I shoot him with a snowball, and that's enough. But using snowballs is a little problematic during the night uh, when the villager is asleep, so we'll be inducing panic with a hostile mob. So to be in panic, a uh, villager has to see the mob and the mob needs to be close enough. However, different mobs have different scare ranges. So here, for example, we can turn the sphere around the villagers of radius 8, which is suitable for zombies and the like, like husks. So for example, at this point, this one is a little too far. It doesn't invoke the panic effect, but for example, this one, this one will be in, in range and cause panic, and same with, for example, this one. And if you, for example, block a line of sight, as you can see, we have no panic. Unlike mob detection, it's not about mob hitboxes touching that sphere, it's all about the center of the mob. That's why we don't have a panic in this space, for example. We'll be using here mostly zombies and husks because they are easiest to obtain and don't need a name tag uh, for them since we want to keep them forever and we don't want them to despawn and zombies holding an item will save us a name tag this way but they have the shortest range. Vindicators scare them at range 10, uh, Ravagers at 12 and the rest of the mobs that can scare them have range attacks so they are not that useful. Like for example Pillagers which scares them from 15 blocks away or Evokers from 12. 
In order to summon a golem, they need to be active part of the village, so they need to sleep within the last in-game day, they need to work within the last one and a half days, so they can slack one day if they want to. They haven't seen a golem recently within the 600 ticks, obviously they need to be in panic mode for the panic summon, but they also need to find at least two other buddies within this hitbox expanded by 10 blocks that also need a golem. They all have to satisfy the work, sleep and golem last scene requirements, but they don't need to be in panic. But it helps if all three of them are in panic anyways, because there will be more of them trying to summon a golem. So for example, you have three villagers, we let them go to sleep. Then we let them do their work. Even if just one of them is in panic, that's sufficient to spawn a golem. Once the golem is spawned, all villagers that are within this 10 blocks out area are marked as they've seen the golem automatically, which will prevent them from spawning any other golems, so we have to keep this in mind. What else? Golem spawning mechanics. That's the only part that got almost ported one by one from previous versions, and that's why it's a little lopsided. They could have fixed it, make it symmetrical like everything else, but they haven't, so that's what we've got. When a villager tries to spawn a golem, it does this in this area, or rather, the block to spawn a golem on top uh, needs to be within this area, which is six blocks up and six blocks down from the block villager staying on, and eight blocks in the negative directions, and seven blocks in the positive directions. In the most of this area, the blocks are required to have material that blocks light and have a top solid surface, like uh, solid blocks top slab, but also top trapdoors, which by themselves don't block light, but the material they are made of does. Doesn't make sense. I know. Whatever. They also have to have air or water right above it, and they need to have non-solid, non redstone non non-rail blocks two blocks above it. Apart from that, golems only check for entity collisions and no block collisions, so they can spawn in blocks. For example, if there is an air block below that path block, that's actually sufficient for a golem to spawn in the middle of the path. That's not very useful mechanics, it's quite actually annoying, but hey, it's a cool quirk. Another quirk is that they can't typically spawn on glass blocks, but if the glass is on the top layer of this range, they actually can. But in general, to prevent golems to spawn within this spawning area, we can use glass blocks, redstone component, rails, or blocks that don't have the top surface. Now, you would want typically to use water streams to move the golems away from this area, and that's fine, but the larger the spawning area, the longer it will take the golem to leave that 16 blocks out detection zone. But the more spawning surface area you'll have in the 16x16 16 16 platform, the more chances you'll have to spawn a golem. And this also changed comparing to 113 and before. Before each golem spawn attempt would draw a random 10 points blocks in this entire volume and check if a golem can be spawned, meaning that if there is here 3000 blocks, so we had to maximize chances by selecting the spawning blocks by having multiple platforms, etc. In 1.14, each attempt analyzes the topmost eligible block in the entire column of blocks. So in turn, we get 10 stabs per villager to spawn within 256 slots, so it's much better. So for example, if we only have 25 spawning spots, the chances of one of those 10 attempts to succeed is 64%, and with three villagers panicking at the same time, it's actually 95%. So there is a balance to be made between the size of the platform and the speed you can move the golems out. Because once you spawn one, the villagers will randomly up their, their golem scene clocks, which adds extra seconds to a general 30 seconds timeout. And all three of them in the cell have to have these clocks in negative to spawn a next golem. And because of the fact that the game scans the entire column at once, building multiple spawning platforms is actually counterproductive. There are a couple more things. Spawning attempts uh, for the actual golems happen every 5 seconds, so 100 ticks, but unlike all the previous timings I mentioned here before, which are all randomized, this one is synchronized with the global clock, and all villagers attempt to do that all at once. This means that we can actually squeeze these villager triples quite close together, and if they are at least 11 blocks apart, they will be spawning their golems almost independently. Now let's talk about the villager holding cells. 
The goal for them is to allow three villagers to get their job, being able to work at it, which is not apparently the same thing, have access to the bed and sleep in it. They have to be contained and be able to see the zombie or the other hostile and be relatively compact because we want to have some requirements to squeeze those together somehow. There's however little problems with these though as the game doesn't seem to like certain configurations and since we are trying to block them here and recognition of workstations on the bed happens to be depending on the pathfinding, not all configurations actually work and this is very location specific and sometimes simply weird. And these things change pretty much from snapshot to snapshot at this point with all the minute adjustments to the pathfinding mechanics which is quite frustrating but the lesson is don't take all of these designs I'll be showing here as 100% working across all versions because this might not be a thing. Just whenever you find a particular holding cell doesn't work anymore, try to find something that does work in a future version. For example, this very basic cell, first shown by methods I believe, was really nice but stopped working as of uh, 1.14.4 I believe as villagers stopped working at these workstations below. This design acted like a 1x1 during the day and 2x3 during the night since villagers could technically be spread around into these beds. This design for example here is 2x2 and it's 2x2 all day round but doesn't break as of 1.14 for pre-release 5. This one over here is 1x1 during the day and 2x2 during the night but actually sometimes breaks in pre-release 5. And it's weird because you can remove all the obstructions and they don't seem to be interested in the beds anymore. It seems like they erase them from their brain but forget to notify the point of interest system that this bed is not theirs anymore. However, this one with strings and carpets instead of uh, trapdoors seem to be working fine though. So this design, for example, is 3x1 during the day and uh, 3x2 during the night and it was breaking in pre-release 4 but now I've been testing it for equivalents of months and months in pre-release 5 and it works just fine. The reason I use here redstone is we don't want the golem to spawn with the villagers as this is technically a valid golem spawning spot but you can use strings and rails as well. In any design you want to create for an iron farm be mindful that these are not set in stone. Moyang the developers of Minecraft are still tweaking pathfinding issues so that's something that you should take with a little flexibility and test if that particular holding cell is working on your door version that you are running. I'll show you some of the issues I found with some of the cell designs. There will be spoilers of some of the farms I'll be showing today, but hey. In this one, for example, that's really weird. One villager still had his workstation assigned to him, but simply could not figure out the way to work at it. And this happened just here, and just for that guy. It wasn't a problem in any other cell, but since I didn't require a 1.1 holding cell here, that thankfully wasn't an issue, but it's weird anyways. Replacing the workstation fixed the problem. In this case, and that's actually more common, all the villagers have lost their beds access. To the point that even if I remove all the obstacles, all the blocks, and give them a full path, they still can't seem to find these beds. Just one did. Replacing the beds fixes it, indicating that this was an issue with the POI system, because replacing the beds refreshes its entry in the point of interest system. Point of interest storage is where the game keeps track of all the beds and workstations in the game. However, as I said, giving them a full 2x2 area to roam or just by using carpets seem to be working just fine in pre-release 5 for this design. So now let's look at some farm designs. First one seems to be really nice, compact and it's a quad farm you can easily build. Might not be the simplest because we need a Vindicator, but it looks like the most minimalistic at least. We have here four of the corner 2x2 cells, which are spread exactly 10 blocks apart, so villagers in all cells simply don't see other villagers in other cells. However, they have overlapping the golem detection area, so they need to spawn them all at once, and they can spawn up to four golems in one shot. It may happen that some villager spawns a golem and another villager in some other cells ends up refreshing their golem detection tick and spawns the fun for other villagers in that cell, so that's still possible, but all in all, really nice design, compact and concise. We cannot use a zombie because the 8 blocks range would be a tad too short, but with a Vindy with 10 blocks range, it works just fine. The one thing is, you cannot just put a Vindicator here in the middle and call it a day, because in panic mode, villagers cannot sleep and cannot work, which means that they will quickly lose their badges and stop spawning golems altogether. 
That's why we have him bobbing here on the souls and bubble column and also have the, the water flowing out to the other corner. This makes it so that uh, he also gets pulled by the water, otherwise with only bubble columns, uh, full jacuzzi, it is actually possible, yet very unlikely, that he might get psyched about one villager and stop bobbing. And bobbing is what makes him lose a line of sight with villagers on occasion. Design seems to be very good, but has one problem, which is lag. By threatening the villagers all the time or most of the time, we double the work that game has to do to run our farm. And for the most of the cooldown cycle, we don't actually need to scare villagers at all, because they are not spawning golems anyways. This might not be a problem for you if you are not playing with others or you don't want to scale it up much more, this farm would be just fine. It's compact, it's quad, it's efficient for a quad with shared spawning area, it looks simple but it requires a vindicator. But we want to strive for a CPU efficiency as well, not only to be good for others, but also to be able to scale up our design with very little cost, so we can produce even more. For that, let's do some demonstration. So what we have here is just a bunch of villagers, they don't do anything at this point, and the game is running as fast as it can. I disabled all the stuff that's not necessary for the demonstration, and we only have a bunch of villagers and the AI. So let's observe the speed of the sun and the moon. And the moment I spawn a zombie, the game slows down pretty much twice. So reducing exposure of zombies to villagers is actually quite important, because it will not only reduce the compute the farm requires, makes it more server friendly, expandable, stackable, etc., but also allows us to reuse that zombie or whatever we use to scare the thing uh, for multiple groups of villagers, reducing the entity count of the farm even more. Technically, we could even synchronize the pickable moment for villagers with golem spawning, which would align us with this 100 tick world clock and just show the zombie 20 ticks before the actual spawn attempt. But that would likely require some very precise timing circuits and don't give us too much benefits, so we'll be focusing on making sure that the cycle of the zombie is long enough to allow for the villagers to reset their golem needs and exposing them for just about 5 seconds to make sure it's long enough for our villagers to have a chance to spawn a golem. So here's first of the designs. If you look at the scare radius, we can see that this zombie here scares one or two sets of villagers at a time. Having zombies in minecarts in flowing water allows them to move really slowly, almost painfully slow, but we need this 40 second cycle anyways, so that's actually not a problem. This design has some things that are not super hot though, like the fact that zombies come in range for each group for actually quite a long time, so 15 to 20 seconds, and in case it's night, it doesn't wake up the villagers that are in the corner bit of the cells, which means that only two villagers actually perform the spawn attempts. That would be fine, but because we have each group that's very close to each other, if we would have, for example, a shared spawning platform, that would spawn one golem from one group at a time, and then the rest of the villagers would have a good chance to recognize that golem and refuse to spawn their own. And that's why each villager group here has its own platform instead which is 16 blocks away from all other groups. But due to very limited ranges for spawning, not this one, this one. This means that the spawning area could actually be really small. So for example, for this group here in this positive corner, this means that they only have nine spawning spots really if they are at the workstation, which gives about 70% chances of success for each spawning attempt. And in the negative area with 16 spawning spots, this is almost 90%, so much better. I tried to give them a little bit more space to wander around, hoping they would uh, move about and see more of uh, what their spawning pads, but that rarely happens. All in all, this design over here produces slightly less because of that, comparing to that one, but it's still much better for the environment and only requires to capture a zombie in a minecart and that's it. Another thing what you can do is, for example, to spread the villager group significantly. This one is, for example, have them 16 blocks apart, meaning that not only they don't interfere with each other, but also we can use the entirety of this quadrant over there and for their own spawning paths. Since moving a zombie in water is painfully slow, we'll be only using water here to keep the zombie letting the villagers to spawn the golem, and then we'll swiftly move it to the next group via rails. Here we pretty much always get full 4 golems per cycle, with no exceptions. Maybe it's not as elegant as minimalistic as the previous squads we have seen, but it's very compute friendly and always spawns the golems. So now let's look at the design that I would actually recommend building, for a reason, and that's this one. 
If we only use the rails to move the minecart, we can move it relatively quickly and you can control very precisely how long the zombie stays at each station. We could still use water to pose the zombie for a moment, uh, like uh, with the design we have here on the side, but I personally prefer the redstone solution, especially that the redstone is really simple. It's just a detector rail, a simple comparator pulse extender with a torch which logs the zombie for slightly less than 5 seconds, which makes that each group has enough time to get that golem spawn tick, and then the zombie is gone to the next station. Each time the zombie stops, we spook two groups of villagers getting two golems back most of the time. Both groups have technically their own spawning paths. I mean, due to the directionality issues with golem spawning, this group over here can still spawn the golems on one strip on the side, but that's not an issue. Spawning packs we have are wide, but very short. So with 36 spawning spaces, this gives a success rate with three villagers in panic of 99%. So the only reasons we may not get two golems is that one villager from the other side gets uh, his golem tick at the same time as the spawning tick, or villagers get spooked unevenly and the golem ticks comes when only, let's say, one or two villagers are panicking on the side. But that's still very rare and we have a very high chance for a double. Each set of two groups of villagers is actually separated by 20 blocks, so it is not even possible for the other group to see golems from the previous one, doesn't matter where they spawn on the spawning paths. Each full round around this entire loop takes 730 ticks, which is 36.5 seconds, which is exactly what it needs for the golem cooldown to wear off, and since golem paths are very narrow, it takes an extra 3 to 4 seconds for the golem to disappear from villagers range. So we are pretty much on time here in terms of the cycle. As you can see, whenever the zombie appears, some of those timers reset right before that moment. I use here the 3x1 villager cells, so not the 1x1 one one we've seen before, because we don't necessarily need to be so tight here, since we are spacing uh, those villagers more for not to affect their golem senses, and 3x1 would be more future-proof, so whatever changes they might do to the pathfinding, this one is very likely to work exactly the same. What else? Uh, golems are dropped 16 plus extra 3 blocks below the villagers, where they are cooked for iron. At this point we could take as much time as we wanted with them, but lava is always the easiest and the fastest option anyways. And at this point you can easily grab all the drops and transport all of them with water streams to one spot. This farm with 10 groups of villagers, so 30 villagers total, and with one zombie and one minecart produces 4600 items per hour, while the theoretical maximum assuming all the golems would always spawn in the cycle would be 4800, so we are losing just 200 drops. What is most important is that we limit the exposure to the zombie to the absolute minimum so that the farm on a typical server CPU can run extremely efficiently. This setup over here costs about 1.4 milliseconds per tick, meaning that we can stack it up and put next to each other 35 times for the total of 160,000 items per hour, but that's not really necessary because this farm can run in the spawn chunks 24-7 on the server. So that's it guys for today, I hope I haven't missed anything, and there you have it, uh, the iron farm you've all been asking for, I guess. Standard, simple to build, cheap, just a bunch of rails, 30 villagers, one zombie or a husk. Yeah, for a zombie you'd want to have some sort of a ceiling above their heads so it doesn't burn and that's it. You could encase partially these villager stations if you, if you need to, but what you really want is to cover the villagers with the ceilings at least a few blocks above them, but not exactly six because you can get golems spawning on top of them for up to three blocks out uh, where the villagers can be to prevent them from turning into witches in case some lightning strikes. Don't worry about encasing the beds, they don't fall off them, at least they didn't for me, and I've been running this farm from different configurations for many many days. For a smaller design, we have at least a few quad designs I have presented that run at about 1800-1900 items per hour, but I like this one. It's a little lopsided, like golem spawning mechanics. The world downloads are in the description. This modification to visualize their golem counters, I need to add it to the carpet mod in some shape or form at some point, because that could actually be very useful. But this Particle detection spheres and boxes, it's actually just a carpet script I pulled out together quickly, which will come with the world's download file, so you can definitely check it out if you want. 
I fully believe that this design will stay functional in the future. The worst that might happen is if they change the workstation and bed detection again, but this uses rather straightforward design and should be future-proof, I'd say. For example, the changes that they've made uh, so far has broken the villager breeder that I've shown for 1.14. I already have fixed for that, but I would rather wait for the final 1.14 release sometime in the future before they break something else with it. Other than that, I hope you've learned something about iron farming in 1.14, and if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to leave me a like, click that subscribe button if you are new, leave me a comment and questions in the comment section below, and see you in the next one. Bye bye!